Hey, what's up guys? We're going to look at IV graphs. So this is a topic that you did at GCSE. And IV graphs simply means how does the voltage applied across a component affect the current that flows through it? And it's really important because different components respond differently. There are four IV graphs that we need to know at A level. And the first one is a fixed resistor, which we'll draw like this. The second one is a filament bulb or lamp. The third one is a diode. And the fourth one is a NTC thermistor, negative temperature coefficient thermistor. So we just want to know how does the voltage affect the current flowing through? At GCSE, we use the circuit labeled number one here, where we had an ammeter to measure the current and ammeters always go in series. We have a voltmeter, which is always across the component in parallel to measure the potential difference across. And we had a variable resistor. And the variable resistor enabled us to change the voltage and the current across and through our component here we've got a filament lamp so that was at GCSE but it's not actually ideal because it doesn't allow a full range of potential difference across the component so at A level we now use what's called a potentiometer which is in circuit number two so this bit here is our potentiometer and this enables a full range of potential differences to be measured across our component We've still got the ammeter in series with the component and the voltmeter in parallel across the component. So if you have to draw a circuit, it's better to choose the one on the right because you get a full range of potential differences. By varying this sliding contact, we can vary the voltage here across the component from zero to 12 volts. So we get a nice range of results. And then if we switch the battery, we can get the negative voltage. So we get it going in the opposite direction. So let's have a look at the four IV graphs that we need to know for A level. The first one is for a fixed resistor. And you can see here that this we've got a graph of potential difference versus current. It's an IV graph. So how does the voltage affect the current flowing through the component? Now, this fixed resistor obeys Ohm's law. And what we mean by that is the fact that the potential difference is directly proportional to the current. So when you double the potential difference, the current doubles also. This is, this is shown in this graph because we've got a straight line and it goes through origin. That's what we mean by directly proportional. This is a fixed resistor, and therefore the resistance of this component is fixed as long as it's at a constant temperature. And the feature of the graph that shows that this is a fixed resistance is the fact that the gradient is constant also. And if you want to work out the resistance at any point, you simply do R equals V divided by I. So if I wanted to choose this point here, I would take the voltage, this value here, and I would divide it by this value here of the current. It is as simple as that. And wherever you do that on this graph, you get the same value of resistance because it's a fixed resistor. What is really important here though, is that the resistor must be held at a constant temperature because temperature affects the resistance of components. So that's the first IV graph. The second IV graph is the filament lamp. And I always remember this because it's shaped a bit like an F, the shape of the graph. Right, this does not obey Ohm's law. The potential difference is not directly proportional to the current. And that's because it's not a straight line graph. It does go through origin, but it's not a straight line. So it's really important to note that this filament lamp and any filament lamp does not obey Ohm's law. We need to analyze this graph and to describe it, we need to separate it into two points. So the first point is at low voltages. So you can see here that as we increase the potential difference, we need to look at what's happening to the current. So as the voltage or the potential difference increases, the current increases at a rapid rate. You can see that the graph is very steep here. And then let's have a look at higher voltages. So at high voltages, as voltage increases or potential difference increases, the current is still increasing, but at a slower rate. This means that the resistance must have increased. And that's really important. And we need to look at why this happens in filament bulbs. So at the start, we had a low resistance, the current increased rapidly. And at high voltages, we've got a higher resistance, the current increased at a slower rate. And it's all to do with metallic bonding and the nature of what causes resistance. So in this picture here at the bottom, we've got metallic bonding. So we've got some red metal ions, they're not obviously red, but I've just shaded them in there. And we've got the little purple dots represent the electrons flowing through when we apply a potential difference. Resistance is caused by these electrons colliding with the metal ions. So when the metal ions are cold, they're vibrating about a fixed position and they're vibrating with a lower frequency and a smaller amplitude. 
When we heat this metal up at high voltages, these metal ions start to vibrate more. They move about more and they're more likely to collide with the electrons. So when the lamp gets hot, we need to say that the metal ions gain kinetic energy. And because they gain kinetic energy, they vibrate more. And if they vibrate more, you're going to have more electron metal ion collisions. And this simply means that there is more resistance. And that's why filament bulbs, the graph starts to curve off at high voltages. The metal ions have gained so much kinetic energy, they're vibrating so much more, they're colliding with electrons more, and therefore there's more resistance and it's harder for the current to increase. So the graph starts to curve off. So key points to remember here, as you increase the voltage, the resistance increases also because of the increase in temperature. Our next one are diodes or LEDs, which is light emitting diodes. Once again, this does not obey Ohm's law. The key thing to remember about diodes is actually in the symbol, that they only let current flow in one direction. They're like one-way circuits, in uh, one-way streets in circuits. So let's have break this graph down into three separate parts. So in the negative voltage direction, that means we've switched the EMF supply around and we're pushing the current through the opposite direction to the forwards bias. So in the negative uh, the voltage direction, there is no current. This means that the resistance is effectively infinite because if you do resistance is voltage divided by current and if the current is zero, whenever you divide anything by zero, you're getting an infinite resistance. So in the backwards direction, this diode is restricting, it's stopping all current from flowing. Now let's have a look in the forwards bias, in the correct orientation for this diode. So we're pushing the voltage and the, well, the, the current in the right direction. So in the positive voltage direction, we actually have this area below what's called the threshold. And here there is still no current. You can see the graph is still flat, it's still at zero. And the resistance is still infinite. There is no current, and again, for the same reasoning, the diode is simply not letting any electrons to flow through it. As soon as we get past this threshold voltage, Vt, the current increases rapidly. You can see the graph curving up. It curves up, and it goes up, and it goes up. And it's actually getting easier and easier for the current to flow. And what is happening here is that the resistance is decreasing. The reason for this is that diodes and LEDs are made out of semiconductors and semiconductors um, act in a very special way. They have a medium number density of free electrons, but when you apply a voltage, the semiconductor will get hot and you get a larger number density of free electrons. Basically more electrons um, are liberated to the conduction band so that it's easier for the semiconductor to conduct electricity. So in summary with diodes, in the negative direction, there is no current, the resistance is infinite. Below the threshold, the resistance is still infinite. Above the threshold, the current increases rapidly and the resistance is always decreasing because we're getting a larger number density of electrons. Okay, our final one is thermistors. And we're specifically looking at NTC, which is negative temperature coefficient thermistors, which means that as they heat up, so when we increase the temperature, the resistance is decreasing. That's what we mean by NTC. So again, this does not obey Ohm's law. It is not a straight line graph through origin. We need to once again, separate this graph into two parts. We're just gonna look at the right-hand quadrant, the top right-hand quadrant. So at low voltages, the thermistor is cold because we've got low voltages. And we can say that here, the resistance is high. And you can see that because this graph is increasing at a very slow rate, there's a low gradient there. At high voltages, the current increases rapidly. And the reason why the current is increasing rapidly is because the resistance is lower. And this is for the same reason as uh, the diode that we just saw, that thermistors are made of semiconductors and when they get hot, you get a greater number density of number of electrons per meter cubed. That's the number density of free electrons. Therefore, there's more current and there is therefore less resistance. So this graph is the opposite of a filament lamp. At low voltages, the resistance is high and the 
current increases slowly. But at high voltages, the thermistor gets hot. And because the thermistor is hot, there is less resistance. And that's simply because there's more, there's a greater number density of free electrons. Right, there's lots to take in in this video. What's important is to just recap and remind ourselves of the key points. At GCSE, to investigate IV characteristics, we used a variable resistor. But at A level, we're going to use what's called a potentiometer. And that enables a full range of potential differences to be investigated. So really important to remember that we get the full range of PD. If we now look at the four graphs, we need to remember, first of all, that we've got the fixed resistor, which is number one here. And as voltage increases, current increases, it obeys Ohm's law. So V is proportional to I, directly proportional, and the resistance is constant. Where we have number two, we have a filament bulb. And here, as voltage increases, the current increases at a slower rate. And that's because the resistance has increased when the temperature of the bulb increases. Number three is our diode. So we'll just number it here, number three. And we've got to remember here that in the negative voltage, so in the backwards voltage direction, the resistance is infinite. Below the threshold voltage, the resistance is still infinite. And then above the, the threshold voltage, the resistance is decreasing and the current increases at an increasing rate. Really important. And that's because you're getting a greater number density of free electrons. Finally, number four is a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. So at low voltages, the uh, thermistor is cold. Therefore, the resistance is high and the current increases slowly. At high voltages, the thermistor gets hot. Therefore, the resistance is low and the current increases rapidly. There's lots to take in. So I'd watch this video a number of times and you just have to think through by looking at each of these graphs, what's going on in terms of the voltage, the current and the resistance. With all of these, if you ever are asked in the exam to calculate the resistance, you simply use your equation. Resistance is the potential difference divided by the current and you use it at that point. You don't need to take the gradient. You just simply use the values off your graph. And that's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.